Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Cowboys Dance Hall here in beautiful San Antonio, Texas, this is the main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled in the junior welterweight division. Presented by Golden Boy Promotions in association with Leja Bata Promotions and sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Chairman Mike Arismendares. The executive director is Bill Coates. The three judges scoring this belt at ringside on the 10-point must system. Glenn Crocker, Joel Elizondo, and Ursulo Perez. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mark Calloy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Fight fans here in San Antonio, Texas, make some noise if you Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing teal trunks trimmed in the flag of Mexico, con los colores green, white, and red. He weighed it officially 139 at one half pounds, and this 24 fight veteran brings an outstanding record that stands at 23 victories. Just one defeat, 10 wins coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Big Bear, California. Here is Luis Ramos. Junior! And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing purple, trimmed in gold and white, he weighed in 140 pounds even. His record stands at 15 victories. Two defeats and 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. The fighting pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here is the Atrisco King, Fidel. Maldonado Jr. Once again, referee in charge, Mark Calloy. Louis. Let's go. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, you've already received the rules in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Let's touch gloves. Let's go to work. The referee is Mark Calloy. Two fighters, destinies led them to this point. A matter of survival, as we said, and keeping your name within prominence as a future contender in the 140-pound division. This man right there, Maldonado's just 22. We should set the stage for Ramos, who's wearing the green and red and white of Mexico this night. The last time out was in Anaheim for Ramos, because they meet right in the center of the ring and don't waste any time establishing uh, themselves inside rather quickly. They're pent up. They got a lot of aggression. They're ready to go, but Ramos, Lost a fight that he that he had won, except for he got cut in the fifth gown against Ricardo Williams, and that really took some steam out of him because he was questioning his abilities, questioning his heart. And here he is, he's trading on the inside. I mentioned Bernard; he was going to try to work himself on the inside, but they're not wasting any time. They're not wasting any time, and this must be the battle of the softball night because it's again another style, uh, same style, and and you know both softballs, and they're not wasting any time. They must have warmed up real good in the gym. As I said, and also in the dressing room. It's like fighting. It's like fighting in a mirror, right? You yeah. see your style on the other yes. side. When you tap two lefties in there. Two minutes left in round number one. Good, crisp left hand across. You see the smile on the face of Maldonado. That caught him a little bit. Ramos loves being on the inside. That's where his pocket is. He's going to work there if he can. Well, that's when he's been successful in, in previous fights. I mean. Um, He's going to work inside, and that's the best thing for him because he knows that he's, you know, he feels probably so stronger, and he's, he's, that's his style inside, fighting, gritty. He just got hit with a right hook just now. Just did, and, and almost could have been a knockdown, you know, but he didn't move all the way down. He's walking in the punches now. This both both punches, punch, 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 Ramos getting the worst end of it. Already a cut opening up over his left eye. Remember, he got cut bad against Ricardo. Cuts have been a problem twice in his career for him. And he's already got an issue right here in the first round. Letting themselves go right here. Bernardo digging upstairs with the uppercuts. Ramos trying to hold on right now. And that's a deep cut. That's a real bad cut right underneath the eye, you know, under the eyelid or eyebrow. And it's coming down in the eye. Well, Bernardo working the uppercut right now. But a big, big issue with a long minute left in round number one for Ramos. 
Oh, no, not again, he says, and his quarter says, because that is a deep cut. We'll have a look at it as this, this round moves onward, but Maldonado just looking to dig in and tee up. He likes to take a wide stance and sit down on his punches, and Ramos has been walking right into them. And Ramos don't know no other style. But look so how he, he, don't e back. He, he don't even know how to back up and maybe get a breather because he's cut and he's hurt but he still continue to come forward because he doesn't know how to back up and can preserve some, you know, time for himself. But he did do some good work right there. He has landed some left hands. He will have to deal with a cut. It's not really pouring. He's having to wipe it away with his glove as they always do. And he'll be told, oh, he's got staggered. But he's not hand. stable. He's not stable. And every punch you get hit with, he seems to have a funny feeling. Final seconds of round number one. Maldonado's landed the harder shots and has not been staggered. Ramos has landed some good punches as well. But this was Fidel Maldonado. Let's take a look at the eyes. We head over to the red corner. There's Abel Sanchez stepping in to get a, having trouble getting into the corner to take a look at that eye. Yeah, it was precious seconds that could have been used, but you know, things happen like that. But he got hit with a good, that was a punch, one to hit, but it wasn't nothing like that or elbow. It was a good shot. And it's, a, it's in a bad spot because it come, it's coming down in the eye. It's not Leading on top the of the forehead. Yes, it's not on the side of the head. It's right there. And, and when you got that type of cut, it's, it's not good because it's gonna come in your eye every round. Maldonado's had quick stoppages in 2013 while Ramos has been up in Big Bear training in June. Down in Tabasco, Mexico, he took out Abraham Asuna in the first round. He almost did that here. And then in February against Jorge Romero, it only went three. So he's looking for quick work on this evening. Now here's the punch that I believe that started the cut. Right there. Now you see the blood, the blood. It was that punch, that right hook from the southpaw stance with the one that opened that cut on the left side of the eyebrow. Round number two, scheduled for 10. Left hand over the top for Maldonado, who was hit but not wobbled. And Ramos has an issue with a cut in his eyebrow, pouring down into his eye that he'll have to contend with if he hopes to win this fight. A shove right there and a slip. I mentioned they wouldn't be dancing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right, because no one bought dancing shoes. They came here to force their will on each other, and it played out, and we in the second round feel like the eighth round. Maldonado likes to work from distance. I haven't just even talk about it because he's been so fast, but if he gets out there and he gets, he can sit down on his punches and use that wide stance, he's going to use that reach advantage. Tonight's CompuBot stats are brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. As now Ramos is moving oh, upstairs with a left hook. Ramos is not where he needs to be, up on the ropes, because, I mean, excuse me, Maldonado, because Ramos likes that. He can tee off on the inside. Yes, I mean, <laughs> you know, he would love to keep him on the ropes, because, A, he would get back in the fights and he'd buy himself some time uh, to, to gather himself. Right. But that's his fight inside, to continue to work inside and wear the guy down, his opponent down. And, and, and listen, whoever stays in the middle of the ring is going to have the advantage. Nice uppercut on the inside from Ramos, digging to the body, upstairs, right hand to the jaw, and Maldonado needs to get off those ropes because he's doing what Ramos wants him to do, giving him a target. Now, Maldonado mentioned he gets a little bit overconfident, which may have cost him a couple of fights. Because he's got a lot of, a lot of talent, a lot of power. I see good kid. I see good body work from both guys in close though. They both throwing one or two shots to the body. They're not just head hunting. They throw one or two shots to the body, which is going to play a factor later in the fight. Right hand from Ramos there. Left hand from Maldonado. At this pace, can anybody in here see this going the distance? <laughs> if they have anything left, they'll just stagger out by then. Here we go, Ramos working. I'd be very surprised if this go to distance because these guys are really, really uh, trying to force their will and, and take control of this fight early. A lot of blood on the chest of Maldonado coming from that left eye of Ramos. It cost the cuts cost him a fight he had won against Ricardo Williams. It was not ruled a headbutt in that fight by Ruel Caiz Jr. in California. And so a lot of people, he had dominated that fight. Here we go. Into the corner, Maldonado content to sit on the ropes a little bit and taking a breather, both fighters here, as we close out another 
high action round number two. Now look at Ramos, he's coming in, he's throwing punches, he's working inside, but he's also getting hit with uppercuts also right there. But he's working at bodies, keeping his guy on the ropes, and that's what he needs to do to be successful because that cut is not going to get any easier, it, it, lighter. It's going to continue to keep leading as he get hit. And once again, Maldonado on the ropes where everybody says he doesn't need to be, but Bernard, we wonder, Ramos' sense of urgency. The, the cut didn't look that much worse after round two, but it will get worse, and he may have a feeling, I, I've got to get this guy out of there before the cut stops the fight, because it's happened to him before. Absolutely. I mean, he's not a boxer. He's got to stay close. He's got to make it a rough and tough fight and, and, and hopefully get one of those big bombs in there, maybe give his guy a cut or, you know, stop him or maybe knock him down and maybe get really into this fight um but it's going to take that he can't box the guy he can't stand out there and do it because the blood's going to affect his eye round number three scheduled for 10 maldonado's in the purple trunks with the gold and white fringe and the green red and white of mexico is luis ramos jr two southpaws in there two guys that only know one style let's get in there and mix it up and that's why we head through round number two ramos probably came back and won round number two after suffering the cut and getting overwhelmed a little bit in round number one. But we're in round number three. This is junior welterweight action from San Antonio. Completely different Ramos here as he's now, he's on the outside trying to land the long jab. So you never know what you're going to get, Bernard. Yeah, I mean, he, he realized <laughs> he realized he has to go ahead and settle things down and, and try to you know, work his speed and work some of the boxing skills that he might have. And, you know, we're going to see. But I think if you continue to fight in close and continue to try to put the pressure on him, you'll have better results later. Well, he didn't spend too much in altitude at Big Bear, California for nothing. A little bit of hugging and shoving right there, which you expect sometimes. Hopefully it's what not a... Oh. I mean, I didn't see him warn him the first time. I mean, he take a point the first time. Wow, I don't know where that came from. I... Already, the uh, uh, referee I mean, has a short fuse. I didn't see any warning whatsoever, and this is big. Ramos just had a point taken away. And it was clean fighting up to now that to, to even, you know, take a point or even, I even see one warning through the whole match right now. Well, I, I mean, during the third round, so. What, what was it for? Was it, it wasn't a low blow, was it because he was wrestling? I don't know, it was, it was just a hard clinch. It was a hard clinch, it was a hard clinch here in this corner and he felt that maybe it was something different, I don't know. That is that is really a huge ruling from Mark Culloway, the referee, so Ramos has got to come back and try to win this round just to get it even. I'm telling you, Amy, we've seen a little bit of everything on this night. Final seconds of round number three, and a horrific setback scoring-wise for Ramos Jr. Now here we go with the clinch, and this for the point got taken away. I mean, to me, that was, I mean, both guys are tangled. I didn't see any, you know, any type of foul or any type of, you know, Repeated aggressiveness to it do this. It wasn't flagrant. It no, wasn't no, flagrant. No, no, they got tangled. But nonetheless, it, 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 it was not bad intentions or flagrant. And, and, but and I didn't see a warning leading up to no, that. No, that's, that's, that's the main point. That's the main point. But it is what it is as we go to round number four. And Ramos has to fight through all kinds of adversity now. A, a cut that hasn't seemingly gotten any worse, but it could at any moment. And having a point taken away in round number three for flagrant uh, I guess uh, tussling <laughs> yeah yeah I mean you know this referee's been around a long time I've seen his face he's not no one new to the game so he might have seen something that we didn't see I don't know but not in that clip there round number four a little more movement from Ramos jr. who's in the green trunks colors of Mexico from Santa Ana California and they call Whoa, right hand on the inside, Clint Maldonado. Now, here's now this is the same type of clinch. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, he was kind of holding him up. I, I don't was, know. Yeah, I was hoping he wouldn't take a point from either guy, but. Ramos has worked his way into this fight after a very difficult first round. And he settled down, and he seems to be more in charge of what he wants to do. We're in round number four, scheduled for 10. 
junior welterweight action from San Antonio. Ramos is definitely active this round. He's throwing more con combinations today. He's got That's energy. Good. He's like he's live. You know, he's up. He's, he's moving. Just do a good one-two punch. Right hand straight, left down the pipe. Tried it again. Oh, then he went right work. back to the body. Excellent body work. And then a left hand upstairs is Clint Maldonado. Maldonado's getting worked in this round. And he's been on the ropes too much for what he typically wants to do in a fight. Both guys rabbit punching each other. The referee uh, broke him and gave him a hard type of look. But uh, I stay watching close because the closer, the, the more this fight fights inside, the more tough and rough it's going to be. Takes a lot of energy, doesn't it, Bernard? Working the shoulders and shoving off like they're doing right there. A absolutely. He's pushing and shoving and hitting at the same time, holding. Donato seems to have lost a gear a little bit. I mean, he's, he's toned it down a notch and he's looking a little bit less aggressive and he's getting hit in the body and that'll always chop you down. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they got eight ounce gloves on and look like he's, you know, has some, <laughs> it look like he left some petrol somewhere and, and he's trying to find it. A good round for Luis Ramos Jr. here. Round number four coming to a close. You're watching Golden Boy Boxing on Fox Sports 1. Throw a good right hand right there. A right hook. That was a right hook. And Sao Paul throw those punches uh, really often. Right there. That right hook was a good shot. Well, they went to the smelling salts a little bit over there in Maldonado's corner. You saw him, Bernard was talking about it, had his hands up on the ropes, trying to breathe a little more deeply. He got caught by some body shots that I think some starch came out of his seams from those shots he took in round number round number four. We're in round number five. Ramos just got clipped coming in with the left hand, but he walked right through it. Yeah, Ramos seemed to be able to say, look, you're going to hit me, but I'm going to get my shots in. And he, I think he noticed that he he, he, he got his, uh, his guy kind of slowing down now, you know. Oh, downstairs, upstairs. Oh, and those body shots have taken an effect. I'm telling you, Malinato slowed down really a lot in that fourth round, and he's looking over in his corner right now. He may be in trouble. Not, yeah, because he's, look, the, the tree is being chopped down, it seems. He's just working his body, bringing him down. And those body shots, look, they might not do nothing the first two rounds, but the, the long as the fight goes on, sort of take your legs from him. And it, it, it seems like he don't have any energy. It doesn't have no life to him. That's where Ramos wants to go. Bernard's won some fights with body shots. He can tell you how they'll have an effect on you. Well, they start wearing on you, and the aching from down below makes you bend over. Stop! I punched him. I, I think, yeah, Mazda. I think he's, he's I think he's, he, he just throwing his hands and letting his hands go, and he's picking the shots in there. And you look at his style. You know. If you look at the first two rounds, it wasn't like it is now. I mean, he's starting to pick his shots. He's starting to let both hands go. And he's getting better, better results. And I think boxing a little bit here and there, boarding some time and really get himself together and then take another uh, strategy way to go in and try to win this fight. But right now, I think he's, you know, he, the fight ain't even. I think he's winning at least a close fight here. Maldonado just got clipped. He saw the smile over the mouthpiece. Maldonado has definitely got himself in a position where he's at least cautious, if not hurt. And Ramos is right on top of it as we go to the final 30 seconds of round number five. I've seen a shift in Maldonado. Now, that's where he wants to be out there throwing punches, but he's not as accurate. He, he, he may be dazed just a little bit. For what Ramos is doing here inside. You see Ramos, the veteran, move away from the referee holding that right hand <laughs> and clamping down on it. Some Ramos still moves. charging forward here in San Antonio. We're going to round number six. A lot of talk over the Maldonado corner from his dad, who's his trainer. 
try to get him re-energized, so to speak, because uh, Ramos has really settled into this fight despite having to deal with that cut, which has not gotten any worse. Abel Sanchez doing a great job keeping this fighter in, digging into the body. I think that's been the difference. Those rim shots, Bernard, you can tell me as much as anybody. Maldonado really has, has lost a lot of steam. He's trying to fight back and clipped on the outside right there. But he's looking to do some one, two, and stay on the outside. But Ramos still digging in the body. Yeah, so there's some good exchange just now. But uh, you know, Ramos, he's throwing the body, hit it, killer body, hit the fall, hit the fall, and that's what he's looked like he's trying to establish and do. I mean, this is a, a really competitive fight. Both guys are giving and take a look at this combination from both guys. Oh, Ramos is a stagger. Now he's trying to hold on and down the That's a knockdown. That was a knockdown. I don't know if he's going to get himself right after that one. Up to seven, eight on the count. He's got to stand up. Going to have to come forward. He's still on Queer Street a little bit, Bernard. I don't think he make it this run. His knees is not there. His hands are down, and he's ready to get hit with a good shot. Balonado looking to close up. He's hurt bad. Ramos got hurt in his own game, which was on the inside. That was a, a bad elbow it just took to the throat from Maldonado. And where was the point then? I mean, that's the time he should have at least stop the fight and warn him, but he didn't. Ramos still in big trouble. You can see that he's wobbly. You can see the long stare in his eyes. It's up to Maldonado to try to find a way to close this thing out in round number six. I mean, the referee seems like he want to get a piece of the action. I think he should, he's let these guys go ahead and fight their way out because they want to let their punches go. Big left, left hand. hand. Big left hand from Maldonado trying to stand. Another left hand. Ramos holding on. He's been in trouble for the last over a minute. In round number six. Maldonado being patient, getting tied up. 48 seconds left. Round number six. Ramos got caught in his own game. He got hurt Inside. again. He's, He's hurt, hurt again. He got hurt again. He got hurt again. He got hit with a right hand. He's hurt. I don't think. They're going to. Referee taking a look. Two more punches. This fight could be over. 30 seconds left. Long way left. Round number six. Ramos on instinct now. Very able to stand. And he's going to go down. He's going to go down as they start to count. Second time he's been down in round number six. 14 seconds left. Will he make it through? He's what still fighting through it. What a warrior. He Amazing. got up. He got up. He didn't quit. He still got up to fight to try to win. How he's still there, I don't know. As he wobbles his way back to his corner. And hoping to survive to round number seven. I mean, what a warrior. What a warrior. Oh, my goodness. How for two minutes of that round, he was halfway out. I mean, this is like Mickey Ward and Tori Gatti all over again. That's a great comparison. You those battles, oh, right? Yes, absolutely. You never knew who was going to be staggered and who wasn't. This has been a great matchup. But Ramos got caught at his own game. Will he clear up in time for round number seven? You know, and Abe Gable Sanchez, you know, is a very respected, very respected trainer. Let's see what happened here. That combination right there. Looked like a right, left, uh, left uppercut, left hook. That started it right here. It was three or four punches. It was a coming to the last one. The right hand right there was what really did it. It was just inside fighting. It was a comedy. It wasn't one big shot till the very end. And here's the second one. I believe Gabe would stop this fight if this fight looks in this round. I believe Gabe would stop this fight when the referee's looking. Yeah, taking a knee in my kind of could have caught it off. He never fully recovered. And getting the knockout in round number seven, just seconds in, is Fidel Maldonado Jr. It was a great matchup. Fidel Maldonado had the quicker hand speed on the inside, used combinations, worked his way through the body shots he took, and it was his hand speed and his accuracy that put the warrior, Ramos, down.
We're going to have the official decision when we come back. But what a great matchup tonight in the Jojo Junior Welterweight Division. Tonight's CompuBox stats are brought to you by ThrowdownFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. And as a partner in Golden Boy Promotions, we're on because you've got to be proud of what these Monday Night Fights are doing for these fighters' the exposure, not to mention they're coming through on their end well. Tremendous matchup tonight, and way to go for Fernando Maldonado, Fidel Maldonado, as he closed this one out. I mean, look at Fernando. I mean, this is the rising star right now. Look at these punches, combinations. He never stopped throwing punches. Once he realized he had his guy hurt, he just continued to keep throwing punches. And, and this is what you get. This is the result. He got in trouble for a couple of rounds with body shots, but he got, it was combinations. As a fighter, he likes to, he knows the combinations get it done. That's textbook work. Exactly. He lets his hands go. Even though some shots went over the head, some shots didn't hit, but some did. And that's all you need when a guy's hurt like that. You continue to throw perches and let the referee help him out of the fight. Vanel Maldonado Jr. from Albuquerque gets it done for the official announcement. Let's go up to our ring announcer, Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. 17 seconds, round number seven. Referee Mark Colloy steps in, calls a halt to the contest for your winner by TKO victory, the Atrisco King, Fidel Maldonado Jr. Well, he, he finished off in grand style, but that seventh round, he, he didn't let Ramos back in the fight. He didn't, he just let his hands. But a great night of action. Thanks for being with us. I'm Alan Massengill from Bernard Hopkins from San Antonio. Fox Sports Live begins right now.